nested forms. So we're going to have a to-do list, and then a to-do list will have several tasks. So our model to-do list has many tasks, and a task belongs to a to-do list. And within our to-do list form, we would like to just be able to click to add as many tasks as we want. And in this episode, we're going to look at making the NASA forms from scratch. And I think that's a great thing to do because we want to see all the inner workings on the JavaScript side and the server side that makes the NASA forms possible. So our next episode, we're going to actually look at doing the NASA forms again, but with the gem. So I have a couple of different gems picked out that we'll look at, and then we'll see how we can replicate what we're doing today with the gem. So to get started, we'll generate a scaffold for our to-do list, and we're just going to give this a name. And then next, we're going to generate a model called task, and then we're going to pass in a to-do list, and we're going to pass in references, and this is going to create a to-do list ID, as well as add in an index for that ID. Then we're going to create a string called name, and then just two extra fields that we're not really going to worry about. Once we have this done, we can migrate our database, and then we have our two tables created. And then in the to-do list model, we want to call has many tasks. And if we delete a list, we also want to delete the associated tasks. And then we want to call accepts nested attributes for tasks. And this is essentially going to allow us to post different tasks in our form for the to-do list. And we also want to allow these tasks within this form to be destroyed. So we can call allow destroy and set this to true. And then when the user is filling out their to-do list and the different tasks, we want to make sure that they're not saving empty records. So we can call this reject if, and then pass in a proc if the name is blank. And you can also do something similar if all is blank. However, for our purposes, we're just going to check if the name is blank. And because we created our tasks with the to-do list references, this was automatically added in. However, there is a little gotcha in the change on how belongs to works in Rails 5, and we need to create this optional true because if we create a new to-do list, and then we start adding in tasks to that new record, we're going to get an error that the to-do list must first exist. So the optional true will allow us to create a new to-do list and new tasks, and save it and not error out. And then in our to-do list form, we can create a simple fields for. And because I'm using simple form, we have the simple fields for. However, if you're not using simple form, it should still work the same just using fields for. So we pass in our form builder object, and then call in the simple fields for, and then passing in the symbol for our association, this is going to give us a new object for each one of the tasks. We can then render partial, and then pass in F for our builder. And in our case, I want to make this a table. And so I'm going to take this partial, and I'm just going to make this into a table. So we have a class of table, we have our header, and then we have our body, and then we can change this div to a T body, and then we can pass in rows for each one of our tasks. And take note on the T body, we do have this class fields because we're going to append the T body with the new task form. And then under the to do list, we have our task partial. And this task partial is just a simple form row, and then we have each one of our inputs. However, we want to also be able to delete a task right from this form list. So we're going to add in another column, and then we're going to put a underscore destroy, and if this is set to true, then the record will be destroyed. However, we're going to set this as hidden, because we don't want this to actually be a checkbox. Instead, we want to create a link to where if they click this delete link, then it's going to remove this entire row. So when the link is clicked, we'll set this underscore destroyed to true, and then we'll close out the closest row. And then we need to take care of these strong parameters within our controller. So we have our permit name, because that's the only attribute that we have for our to-do list, but then we also need to pass in the task attributes. And this is going to expect an array of all the different attributes for the tasks that we need to be able to edit. And one way we can do this is to pass an array of all the different attributes that we want the to-do list controller to be able to edit. And another way to do this, so if we just copy out this row and comment out the first one, we can get rid of this array, and instead we can just call task attributes name. And this is going to pull up a list of all the different attributes for the tasks. And then we can map and then convert each one of these to a symbol. However, we still need to push into this array the underscore destroy so we can delete our records. So just so you can see in the console what would be returned if you ran the task attributes name, 
mapping each one to a symbol and then push in destroy, you'll see that it comes back with each one of the different attributes. Within our new and edit block of our controller, we can call something like to do list tasks and then build, and this will create a new record associated to this to do list. And you can also do something like three times do and then create multiple tasks whenever you create a new one or edit. However, in our example, we're just going to create one single record. So now we can create a new to do list and we're just going to call this test and then call this test task one and then create our list. So next within our form, let's add a new link to where we can create new tasks. So we're going to create this helper method and it's going to take in a few different options. We'll have the text for the button. We'll pass in our form builder and then our association. And then we're going to just pass in a class and this class is optional. And then we'll need to create the link to add new row helper. So it'll look something like this where we take in our name, our form builder, the association, and then we're just going to take additional options in a JSON form. So we're going to create a new object and this new object is taking our form builder and then we're getting the actual object of that form builder and then we're sending the association and then calling class new. We're then going to take our new object and get the unique object ID. And this is just so whenever we create the add link button, we're going to be able to have a unique number that we're going to be able to reference within our JavaScript to be able to replace this. So every new form task will have its own unique ID. And then we're setting this fields to the F dot simple fields for. So this is similar to our view, except in this instance, we're passing in our association, but then we're also passing in the new object. So whenever you have your simple fields for, and you pass in the second parameter as an object, then it's only going to build out that fields for, for that one single object and not all of the associations. And then we're calling render association to string singularize. So this is just going to render out our task partial that we created earlier. And then we just pass in our form object F and we're passing in the builder of our new association. And then we're just creating a link and then we're passing in a few data attributes. One is the data ID. So this ID is what we're going to be able to replace within our JavaScript. And then we're just passing in the fields and then we're escaping any new lines. And within our application JS file, we'll just capture whenever on our form, they click on the add fields, then we're going to run this function. And we're just setting a couple of variables, the time we're getting the current timestamp. And then we're setting this regex to capture the ID value of our data that we passed in. And then on our fields class, we're going to append and then we're going to get our data fields, which is our new form. And then we're going to replace the regex, which is the value that we set up here. And this is going to replace all the object IDs with the new time that we set. And then we want to run the prevent default on this event. So it doesn't actually take us off the page, but then instead just runs us JavaScript. While we're in here, we can also create the logic for our delete button. So we have our form on click. And then whenever you click the remove record, it's going to capture that this previous input type hidden. And this is basically going to find the previous hidden input at the same level and set its value to true or one. And then we're going to find the closest TR. So a few parents up, we're going to find our row and then hide it. And again, call event prevent default. So we're just going to run this code, but then not follow a link. And do note that we do have this wrapped in the Turbolinks load callback. And off camera, I did disable the builder that we had in our new and edit actions. So we can just test this out now. We can add a couple of different tasks. We can call test one, test two, and then we can create our to-do list. We can also test with deleting some of these and it all works. So in our next episode, we're going to look at how we can do this all with the gym to save us some steps within our helpers and within our JavaScript. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.